A firewall is a security device that sits on your network, and as traffic passes through it, that device filters out things that are not allowed in the organization, and it allows traffic through that are allowed traffic in the organization. Most of these are filtering by a TCP or UDP port number, so they work at OSI Layer 4. There are some firewalls that work at OSI Layer 7. They recognize applications, and they can allow or not allow applications to flow through the firewall. Many firewalls can also be configured to create encrypted tunnels between sites so that all of the information between firewalls is also encrypted. If you have remote sites and you want to connect them back to the central site, this is a great way to really make sure that all of the data between those sites is going to be absolutely secure. Some firewalls can also proxy traffic. They will be the midpoint of that communication. You will communicate to the firewall, and the firewall at that point will provide the communication out to the internet. Once it receives the response, it then provides that response back to the end user. That allows the firewall to examine every bit of traffic that goes by. It can perform filtering. It can check URLs. It can examine files for any types of viruses and become a midpoint of all of the traffic going through. It's very common to have our router be a Layer 3 device on the network. It has IP addresses, and it's going to route traffic for us. We're going to put this on the edge of our network, and every time we have traffic that goes to the internet and traffic that comes back, our firewall is also going to route that for us. Of course, we also have firewalls that will run in our operating systems as well. These are software-based firewalls. We sometimes call them personal firewalls. And these days, every operating system you'll find has a firewall that is built into the OS. If you have an old operating system or you just don't want to use the firewall that comes built into the operating system, there are also third-party firewalls you can get as well. This is very common to implement, especially if you have a laptop, you're traveling out to remote locations, you're on wireless networks that are unsecured. This would prevent people from coming inbound into your computer. You can also restrict even applications that might be used from your device. It's a stateful firewall. It can block by application because it also knows what application you're running because it's part of the operating system. So in some cases, this has even more visibility than some of the legacy Layer 4 firewalls that you might have in other parts of the organization. A very common example of this is one like Windows Firewall. Windows Firewall will filter by application. You can filter by port number. You can filter inbound. You can filter outbound. There are a lot of different options, and it's all built into the operating system. Here's some of the screens and options you might have inside of Windows Firewall. The main screen allows you to turn the firewall on or off. There's even an option, if you turn it on, to block all incoming connections. This is what you might use when you sit down at the coffee shop, and you know that nobody is going to need access to your computer. You can turn that on, and you can block all incoming traffic. These firewall settings you can even provide exceptions. Maybe there are applications that need to get through the firewall. So that if somebody needs to provide a remote desktop session, you can simply enable that as one of the exceptions. And if you want to build your own customized ports, you can add them right to the Windows firewall right here. In most organizations, you need security in both places. You need security on the network, and you need security on the workstation. So you'll commonly see an organization deploy both hardware and software-based firewalls.